All right. Kindly, please. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I guess for purposes of gender equality, because almost 90% of the presentations have been from men, allow me to answer one of the questions that has been asked severally. Why mightiest, mightiest? I want you to go on record. For the past 18 years, ever since the ministry, the Church of Repentance and Holiness started, the Prophet Dr. Orr is on record instructing us that please remove me. Don't look at me, look at the message. If you have a problem calling me a prophet, let alone my test, please just call me Daktari and listen to the instruction from the Lord. That is on record. I have it in the archives. Where did we come, come in to call my test? As we saw the works he is doing, that someone can come and say, when I get to Bomed Kyogong grounds tomorrow in less than 24 hours, then I will uh, command heaven to me, open. Uh, excuse me. Yes, uh, please. Let me guide. Yes, please. We want to avoid repetition. That, that thing of Bomed is being said now is the fourth time. Sorry, please. So maybe you want to say something new yes. or yes, allow please. the Archbishop to close down. I will say something new. Honorable Chair, on that question, because I raised it, yes. it may interest you that uh, hearing how the committee is thinking, it's not a title that would be accepted in this committee, of the ad hoc committee, reference of him as the mightiest. But we are giving you an opportunity to explain why. Yes, please. Because even doctrinary, Yes, uh, I think Bishop Margaret has thrown good light even using the Bible itself, the biblical titles that are laid down as the true guide on yes. how the titling for the men of God or the clergy should go around. Yes, please. It's already placed in the Bible. It so is. let's avoid justifying that. And if the doctor himself, Dr. Wall, has actually guided you as clergy and leadership and congregation not to refer him as the mightiest, then it is the people around him who could be the problem if that's how he has guided you. Yeah. So that may not be accepted as a title reference. Yeah, so this so I, I wanted you to tell us something yes. new because I want to give it to the Archbishop as we wind down. Yes. Um, one other thing that we have seen yes. is how do we know that one is a prophet because there's been a case of everyone coming up and the shakahola issue came up from people uh, going up and saying oh i am a pastor and so come to me and follow my instructions and we ended up with more than 400 deaths in the country yeah there's been deception and I, and it is true that there's been abuse of religion and freedom of worship but what i'm saying is the Lord himself calls his prophets. They are not called by men. And how do we know that the prophet is called by God? The Bible is clear about it. Even the titling. Yeah. The book of Second Samuel, chapter 23, verse 8, is very clear. And the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, the Bible says, if a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord and it comes to pass. Fear him. That is the instruction of God and it is exacting. God's instructions are exacting. If the prophet speaks presumptuously and that what he has spoken does not come to pass, the Lord God himself instructs that do not listen to him and do not fear him. And God himself will judge him. The Bible is full of those examples of the prophets that deviated from the ways of God and the Lord struck them, like the man of God from Judah who was eaten by lions. Okay. Yes, please. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Archbishop Chair, if I Archbishop. may, as a uh, on a legal